You're watching First Business. Well, as we've been seeing this morning in Melbourne, the battle between the CFMEU and Grocon continues. After over a week of strikes by union members against the construction company, talks have failed to bring any conclusion to the uh, industrial action with Grocon CEO Daniel Grollo stating he believes that the proposed solutions keep getting worse and it seems that the union believes that illegal blockades are a legitimate industrial tool. The action spread to other states around the country and it's estimated to be costing the company up to $370,000 a day. Well, for more on the legal issues raised by this strike, this blockade, we're joined now by Joy Deep Hoare. And Joy Deep, I, I just wanted to ask you about this. What, what is the actual law around striking? Because this is actually a, a Supreme Court order that the, uh, the union is, is ignoring. Absolutely. Well, strikes have featured... Uh not uncommonly as part of Australia's industrial relations history. It's important to understand that, that there's no right to strike in Australia and that the legislation actually provides a very regulated framework whereby industrial action, as it's formally referred to, can be taken. And, and in Australia it's referred to as protected industrial action. In other words, there are certain forms of industrial action which, if taken in certain circumstances only, will be protected by the law. In other words, they won't be illegal. But they can only happen in circumstances where the industrial action um, has been validly approved by a majority of, of the members of the union that are proposing to take that action. It has to arise in the course of negotiations of an enterprise agreement and, and you must be striking in pursuit of a claim or an issue that is capable of being in that enterprise agreement that, that you're negotiating. And what's interesting is that uh, some of the commentary here, particularly on the, um, on the employer side or the pro-employer side, has very much been about the current legislation allows a broader scope of matters that can make their way into enterprise agreements, therefore a wider scope of matters that can act as catalysts for industrial action. So at the genesis of this dispute is a fairly, some might say a, a fairly discreet issue around OHS um, representatives at, at various Grocon sites and, and what the unions are pressing is autom an automatic um, right that a union shop steward or a union delegate will have to fill that role. It doesn't strike me or I'd suggest probably the majority of people as being a, a die in the ditch issue that goes to the core of terms and conditions of employment but clearly there's enough agitation um, amongst the CFMEU membership in relation to this particular point. Why then do you think that, uh, what, what is it that has sparked the unions to act on such a yeah, big scale? It's, it's really interesting and, and you often see this unravelling in the course of uh, industrial relations disputes. Often um, there is a, a lot of anti-company sentiment, often there are some, some alternative agendas that might be being pursued by the unions or, or often individuals within the unions. Um, we are not too far away from a, an election where no doubt there will be some agitation on the, the union side about wh whichever government gets into power, um, the, the need for more favourable legislation from a union employee point of view. So I wouldn't be surprised if there are some of those kinds of factors at play. Um, I guess looking at, at this, and, and as you mentioned there, you know, many blaming this, this dispute and the escalation in it down, on, the, on the watering down of, of workplace relations laws and in the, uh, under the Fair Work Act, and, and in particular what happened with the Australian Building and Construction Commissioner with this, you know, change to the new Fair Work uh, Building and Construction body. So, I mean, looking at this, do you, do you think that this is just the start of a return to sort of militant style union activity? Yeah, it's interesting. I think if you look over the last uh, 12 to, to 20 24 months. There have been certainly a number of high-profile industrial disputes. There always have been for the last you know, 15, 20 years, um, whether you go back to the, the Patrick's type disputes at the waterfront in you know, the, the late 90s. Um, more recently, obviously, Qantas uh, grabbed the headlines with the industrial action that took place. So I think Australian IR will always be punctuated with some of these kinds of issues. As to whether it sets a trend, uh, I, I don't know. I think there needs to be a, a long, hard look in particular at what conduct can take place or should take place after a court um, has issued an order. And I think that's probably the most alarming aspect of this particular dispute. I mean, people going on strike to pursue the claims, if, if, if they're claims that they feel passionately about and if, it's, uh, if that's industrial action they can take, well, well, good luck to them. I mean, that's something they're entitled to do. But when you actually have a court stepping in and saying, no, hang on, that's illegal, um, and for that 
to be what appears to be flagrantly disregarded is a very serious matter, not just for industrial relations, but for the rule of law in a society. Um, all citizens are entitled to, to know that if a court says that something can't happen because it's illegal and, and issues orders to that effect, that as a society uh, people should be protected by that. Mm -hmm. So I, I think there's going to be a lot of questions asked about um, uh, the, the roles that, that the unions have played, particularly in what appears to be um, quite disrespectful um, conduct towards the rule of law. And interesting too that the, the Victoria State Government is, is saying it's going to pursue damages even if the union and the company settle um, the, this dispute mm. over the, the costs. I mean, um, obviously the police there, we're just seeing the pictures having to, to come in and try and escort workers onto the site um, at this stage. I mean, what do you think of that too? That, or I mean, obviously, you know, a, a conservative government in, in in there is that I mean, yeah, playing a, a role in this? I think so, and I think we, we do look to our governments, and, and governments have a responsibility uh, to ensure that, particularly when you have these situations where the Supreme Court of the particular state has issued an order, that if if that's not being complied with, then if the government doesn't step in, who will? Because from a Grocon point of view, they've got their own interests, understandably, and they'll they'll do whatever to protect those. Um, but but someone has got to look after the, the broader rule of law and the Attorney General stepping in I think was uh, from, from my perspective quite appropriate. And um, just finally I guess what are the implications then for other employers? What, what do they need to, to watch yeah, here and well, consider? Well, look um, I think the truth is that some industries are, are more volatile than others um, and this particular union uh, certainly does have a reputation for being uh, somewhat more militant than perhaps some other unions might be. But regardless of industry I think there's, there's a message in all of this that um, you need to have contingency plans in your enterprise bargaining and your industrial relations strategy for, for, for the what ifs. What happens when things uh, break down? I mean, you talk about the costs of, you know, uh, I don't know what the figures have been cited, but it's about 350000 or something a day that, that this dispute is costing the company. Yeah. Now, um, if all of that can happen so quickly from uh, a breakdown in negotiations and it's at the drop of a hat, um, it's going to take a long while to recover from that and your legal remedies to pursue that are one thing, but the damage that you've done potentially to your brand and, and your suppliers and whatever else is another. So yeah. that would be my main uh, point of feedback to employers. It's, uh, it's a very interesting situation. Mm. Yeah, we'll watch it closely. Great to get your insights Thanks, on it. Thank Brad. you so much for chatting to us. Um, we are taking a very quick break here.